In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install all the kitchen cabinets that you see here behind me. We got base cabinets, we got wall cabinets, and I'll also show you how to read the plans. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Josh. This channel is all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask for in return for making this video. So we got a lot of work to do today, so let's get started. Before you build your kitchen, there's four different things I wanna go over that you need to consider. The first thing is you need to consider the layout of your kitchen you need to take note of any doors windows hallways where your appliances are going to be placed around the kitchen you need to take all that in consideration first before you install your cabinets of course but that's just something you need to think about ahead of time the second thing you need to think about is if you want an island or not so with an island, you need to decide, do you want your sink in the island? Is there any appliances you're gonna want in the island? And again, if you want an island at all, that's gonna to be totally up to you. The third thing you need to think about is what type of cabinets you want. Do you want a full overlay? Do you want a partial overlay? Or do you want an inset? The fourth thing you need to think about is what type of style cabinets you want. Do you want more of a shaker style? Do you want more of a beaded board? Do you want more of a flat look? Do you want more of a distressed look? That's gonna to be totally up to you or whoever the kitchen is being built for. But finally, I just wanted to mention, you can take your dimensions of your kitchen to a designer, most big box stores, or also places that just sell cabinets will have a designer on hand so you can consult with them and they can tell you exactly where you should put your appliances at and what type of cabinets will fit in a space. So always consult with a designer and some things to consider like, you know, if you want your sink underneath of your window, which that's what most people do, things like that. The designer is gonna be a big help. Whenever you order your cabinets, they will come with drawings. So this drawing is simply the overall kitchen layout. As you can see, we've got our island here and then the red line is the countertop going around the island and then we have our one wall here where it runs up to the hallway then we got our window here and then these are all of our measurements running across so this is going to be dimensions and just a rough layout this is the detailed elevation of the wall with the refrigerator and the range and microwave and as you can see there are measurements running across the top and those measurements are going to correspond with the cabinets below. So as you can see, we got 30 inch here. So that means this wall cabinet is 30 inch and then our base cabinet matches it and it's also 30 inch. So if we come over here, we got 24 inch, the wall cabinet matches that. But if we go down here, it's only a 12 inch cabinet that's on the base. So that's something you're gonna to wanna to look for in these drawings and the blue is obviously the appliances. And if you take a look here, the inch and five eighths is this panel leg, and that's gonna go on each side of the fridge. And over here is our height measurements. So that's something you're gonna to wanna to be aware of too. But typically, if you have eight foot ceilings, you're gonna order cabinets that's for eight foot ceilings and nine foot ceilings, you're gonna order cabinet for nine foot ceilings, so on and so forth. Then if we take a look at the next elevation, it is the same way. Again, the top numbers are going to be for our top cabinets. And then the bottom numbers is for our base cabinets. Here is a tall pantry and then our height measurements here. So as you can see, it's not very complicated in reading these plans. And now each cabinet does correspond with a number. So as you unpackage your cabinets, you're gonna to wanna to take note of the numbers that's printed on the packaging. Now on the final drawing, as you can see, this is what it's going to appear to look like when it's all said and done. We have two cabinets with glass on each side of the window. And then you can also reference the number of drawers, so on and so forth, if you get confused of what cabinet goes where, but typically you always go by the numbers. But as you can see, the layout is pretty simple in this kitchen. The very first thing you need to do is find the highest point of the floor of the kitchen in order to start installing your base cabinets. Your base cabinets are gonna be the first cabinets you install before the wall cabinets. So this is gonna be the very first thing you gotta do. The easiest way to do this or the most common way of doing this is just take a four foot level, lay it on the floor, and then we're gonna have to move the level in order to make it level or not. So as you can see, I gotta lift up on this end of the level in order to make it perfectly level. So that tells me the highest point in this four foot run is back in this corner. And also, if I go to the other side of the corner and do the same thing, I'm gonna lay this down the floor 
and it looks like I need to move this side up just a wee little bit. So I had to lift that side of the level up and this means that this back corner is the highest point between here and there. So that tells me in this section, the highest point is back in this corner. We know that this back corner is the tallest point and the reason why we got to find it is because we got to know if this was a low point, how much to start off as far as how much we got to shim up off the floor to get started. So you always start in the corner with your corner base cabinet if you have a corner in your kitchen, most people do. So now I got my helper here, he's going to come help me set it back in the corner and we're going to set this level first before we do anything. All we got to do is shift it right into place, tight against the wall. The next thing I got to do is level up this cabinet. You can use a four foot level or a two foot level, but what we're going to do first is check our levelness across the back and then cross this back and then our sides. So that's the system I usually like to try to do, the backs and then the sides. So that way we need to shim up the front if it's low and vice versa. So we're going to go ahead and check right across the back here first. And just like the level showed earlier, this back needs a shim in it. And if we check over this way, it is showing the same thing. So it's just like the floor showed, the back is the highest point, but the edges need shimmed up. The easiest way to level up a cabinet is to take a pack of shims, go ahead and get a shim out of it. And then we're gonna take our level and lay it on the side in which we're trying to level up. And then I'm gonna use what's called a wonder bar. We're gonna slide up to the cabinet and then take our shim. So that way you don't have to lift up the cabinet by hand, pry it up a little bit, slide your shim in, then check to see where we're at. All right, it looks like it actually is a little too much. So I'm gonna pull the shim out a little bit. And that looks really good. So now we know we are level here on the back. So now I'm gonna to go to the other side of the cabinet, and do the same thing. And always be careful, sometimes they put these pieces in the corner that are raised up higher than the top piece of the wood. So what I like to do is just kind of go off to the side so I go from wood to wood to keep things more consistent. So if we take a look here, it looks like the front needs to go up a little bit. So just kind of the same process. So it's going to be level the back, level the back, then the side, then the side. And that's the sequence in which I level up the cabinets. And now when you level up the sides, be sure to place this shim so it splits right where the cabinet is going to set because that shim will support the next cabinet as well. In order to install these cleats in this back corner, I only have studs here in the corner for this to catch. So what I'm going to do is install these vertical. So I'm going to install one like that and install the other one like this. So that way it'll catch that countertop with no problem. And I'm just going to pre-drill these blocks in order to accept the screw so it doesn't split the blocks. Now I'm going to use this right angle drill to drive the screws because clearly I can't get my regular impact driver in there. So I'm going to use this to drive the screws. All right, so as you can see, now we got the cleats in the back that's going to support the countertop. And if we check, it looks really good right there. So now we can move on to the next step. The shims in the back corner of these cabinets need to be flat. As you can see, a shim tapers up. So we can't have that because the back of the next cabinet is going to sit there and it's going to raise it up just a little bit. So what we got to do is we got to place a shim going back into the cabinet first. So sometimes you just got to break these shims down. So something like that. And we're going to slide it under there first like so. And then we're going to take another shim and then we're going to slide it back in until it's wedged in there tight. And as you can see, we are now flat going across here instead of tapered up. And that's what you need to do again in the backs of these base cabinets. And remove that other shim and we're sitting exactly where we were with that shim that was tapered. So definitely want to do that in the back of these cabinets. Now that we got this base cabinet setting level, we got our cleats on. I just want to make sure you know, I'm using two and a half inch decking screws in order to put those cleats on. And I'm going to be anchoring this base cabinet to these studs using the two and a half inch deck screws. Cause you don't want them much longer than that. Cause you risk hitting a wire. 
So now what I'm gonna do, I gotta find the studs in order to anchor this base cabinet to the studs. And if we measure over, we should have a stud right in this vicinity, 16 on center wall. So we're just going to peck on the wall to find the stud. And if you have a stud finder, that's the easiest way, but I'm gonna show you the old fashioned way real quick. So if you listen, you can tell there's something solid here, listen. So we know the studs right in this area. So an easy way to check is just take a nail and guesstimate about where it is and stay where the countertop's gonna cover up the wall and just peck right into the wall. So it actually hit the stud right there. So we know that is where one stud is and you can go 16 off center on center to find the next stud. So we know the next stud is gonna be right around this area. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark it here. I'm gonna remove that nail. And I'm now going to pre-drill the cabinet in order to put the screw in. Now I'm just going to take a decking screw in the impact and drive it in. And an important note here, because the cabinet setting where we don't want it to move, don't drive it tight to the wall because if the wall's not setting perfectly plumb, it's gonna make the base cabinet unlevel. So we're gonna go ahead and just drive it in snug. Now that we anchored this side of the base cabinet, we do the same to the other side. Next, we're gonna to have to install the sink base. So if you take a look here, we just installed this corner cabinet. Here are the dimensions of all the cabinets on this run. Here's the window. So if you take a look, there is a cabinet between the sink and that corner cabinet. So what I'm gonna to have to do is set this one into place because it gets a filler here. And I know this cabinet has to be exact center of this window. So that's why I'm gonna to have to set this one next. So we're gonna address this sink base that goes right here. I'm gonna to have to cut out the back of the cabinet for this drain line and also draw out some holes in the bottom of this cabinet. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some measurements and cut out these items. Not only did I have to cut and drill holes out for the pipes, I also had to cut out for the vent as well. A typical two inch by 10 or two inch by 12 inch vent is normal. Before I set this next cabinet beside this base, I'm gonna to have to get this sink base leveled up and set first. So in order to do so, I'm just gonna place my level from the base cabinet to the sink base and then level it up and make sure this base cabinet is centered of this window before I anchor it. The cabinet that's gonna set in between the corner and the sink base is setting right here. And if we get a measurement across the front of it, it's exactly 27 inches. So it's a 27 inch cabinet that sits here and according to the plans, that's what goes with a filler strip. So if we measure right between the corner and the sink base, we got 27 and seven eighths. So I'm gonna have to rip down what's called a filler strip down seven eighths of an inch and attach it to this cabinet before we set it. Let's do that. This length is for the base cabinets and we're actually gonna rip this down using this table saw. And now for the wall cabinets, it's gonna be a little longer in this case. So always check your order to see what kind of filler strips you got. But this has a finished side and this side, it's, it's not as finished as you can see, it doesn't look as good. So always note that you got a finished side and an unfinished side more or less. So that's gonna be ripped down and always wear your ear protection and eye protection when using any power tools. I already preset this fence to cut off seven eighths of an inch of this filler, just so you know. In order to attach this filler strip, I gotta remove the drawer out of this cabinet. So, and this is gonna be different for every cabinet, but there's little latches on each side of this one to do so. so I'm gonna pull it out and remove it here. So now I'm gonna attach my filler strip to this side of the cabinet because that's the side I want it on. The tools I'm gonna to be using to attach the filler strip to hold it in place while I screw it on are these quick grips. And I'll put a link to them in the description below if you wanna pick them up. But let's go ahead and set the filler strip right up against where we want it. So as you can see, this is the side I have ripped down. So I'm just gonna put the finish side up to it and it doesn't matter really which side you put where. So I'm just gonna hold it into place like so and then take this and squeeze it until it creates pressure right up against that filler strip and tighten it down really tight. And we're gonna set it right where we need it and always make sure you're flush up top, just like that. And in order to attach the second one, I gotta remove this door just temporarily. Now I'm just going to do the same, attach this down to the lower section, and we gotta make sure we're flush with the face of the cabinet as well. 
I'm now gonna use three wood screws, and the difference between these and the deck screws is they're a little smaller diameter. I always use these to attach the cabinets to each other and to install these filler strips. So what I'm gonna do is come from this side and drill right into this wood using a drill bit first, and this is very, very important. You wanna make sure you drive the screws in and pre-drill straight into the face. You don't wanna come out on an angle and risk drilling right through the face of your cabinet, so be extremely careful when doing this step. And this goes for when we attach all the cabinets together as well. So I'm gonna put one at the top, at the bottom, and right in the middle. I'm now gonna switch over to a tool that's called a countersink, and this is gonna allow me to countersink the heads into this wood without splitting the wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in, and all we gotta do with this is place it in that hole and just drill it out to the depth of the head. Now I'm simply just going to drive these screws into the cabinet, and again, go easy. And now just remove the quick grips, and the, we are good to go to install this base cabinet where it is meant to go. And also, this is exactly how you install a filler strip on the upper cabinets, the wall cabinets as well, just so you know. I'm now gonna remove the doors off these base cabinets because we got to in order to install them. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them off now. All right, we're just gonna set the cabinet right into place here. And you wanna make sure you sit the cabinet down on the shims. Try not to slide it back, you'll knock those shims out of place. In order to attach the cabinets together, it's really similar to how we did the filler, except now we're just going to line the cabinets up together with each other instead of just the filler strip. So you do the very similar process. We're gonna hook our quick grip onto it and get it lined up. And then we're gonna come down here a little lower and do the same thing. And since the filler is attached to this cabinet, I just got to install three screws coming from the corner cabinet into that cabinet. And now we do the countersink. And now we just use the same screws that we used when we installed the filler strip. Now we're just gonna remove the quick grips and the cabinets are installed and all we gotta do is reinstall the doors onto this cabinet and we're good to go to keep running the run. I would like to mention there are several different clamps you can buy in order to install cabinets. These quick grips are just the ones I prefer because again, they are quick to use, but any of them are fine. I would like for you to take note of the farmhouse sink base that's here in this video, and I will be making a video in the future on installing the farmhouse sink. When you're installing the cabinets, it doesn't hurt to check See how square they are off the wall? So as you can see right here, we have a gap here and then over here it's tight. So that tells me this cabinet needs to shim this way. So what I like to do a lot of times when you run into this, sometimes these cabinets are a little twisted. I just get shims and then I'll just stick them right in the back here and then just pry them over to where that cabinet needs to be sitting. Sometimes you gotta do that and they're tight. But I just wanted to show you, you might run into that where you gotta shim the back because it's not sitting perfectly square. And when you're installing your base cabinets, you definitely need to keep in mind the length of your appliances. So for instance, a dishwasher that's over there in the side of the kitchen is 24 inches, and the range right here is 30 inches. So what we gotta do is when we jump across, we go 30 inches over to the face of the cabinet to the side, and then we just level across and continue the run just like we normally would do. Whenever you are dealing with these tall pantries, I highly recommend that you have a helper. And with this one, I had to attach the bottom separately because of the shipping. I guess with the height of it, it didn't, it couldn't be attached. But then after you attach it, just set it right in place like normal. I'm now gonna set the base cabinets for the island. And like a lot of kitchens, you're gonna want your island directly center of your island lighting. So in order to do so, the best thing to do is take a plumb bob and hook it to the center of the light and plumb down to the floor and then mark the floor and go from there. A lot of chalk lines will act as a plumb bob. So what I'm gonna do is just hook it right to this light, right in the center of it, and I'm just gonna take it down to the floor and mark where it hits. As you can see, the chalk line is hanging down like a plumb bob would, and we're just gonna mark the center of that chalk box on the floor. 
and that's going to be exact center that we need to set our cabinets. Now that I know where my base cabinets are going to sit, what I'm going to do is I made a cleat that's going to screw down here to the floor and then I'm going to just go through the grout joints of the tile and pre-drill it with a masonry bit and then run these decking screws through the board down through the floor so when I set my base cabinet I can shoot finish nails into these cleats that's going to hold just the ends of this island stable and into place until the island countertop gets on it can shift around kind of easy so I don't want that to happen so I'm just going to put these cleats on each end of the island to secure it. All right, now, once that's anchored to this cleat, these cabinets are going anywhere. I now got the base cabinet setting roughly where they're gonna be setting permanently. I put the base cabinet over those cleats, so we got cleats on each end of these base cabinet setting, and obviously they're not screwed together yet, as you can see. And what I did, if you remember right, we got the center where the floor is going to hit. Now that's going to be the center of the island top, but not of the base cabinet. So the island top center is exactly the center of the center cabinet and clear back here on the edge. So this lines up right the center of that light. So now what we got to do is take a level and we're going to level over from our base cabinets that's against the wall. As you can see, we gotta start by shimming up just a little bit, and then we're just gonna set these just like we did the cabinets that are against the wall. When it comes to building an island, they are very customizable. For instance, this island could have easily been 54 inches, but I cut it down to 48 inches wide by eight foot long, and also, I'm gonna to have to drill a hole up through the center of it in order to power the receptacles for this island. I like for you to take note of the wiring that I pulled up through the middle of this island and this is jumped off of the receptacles around the kitchen and now I'm going to make a detailed video on how to wire the island for the receptacles coming off this wire so if you want to check out the video the link is in the top right hand corner of the screen so now I got to anchor this to the cleats so I'm going to show you how to do that. In order to attach the cabinets to the cleats, we know that the cleats are right on the other side of this panel on the side of the cabinet. So I'm just going to pre-drill and countersink the heads of the decking screws to attach it. Now this side is anchored and I got to go to the other cleat on the other side and do the same thing. I now got to build the apron onto this island and in order to do so I got to install a finished panel here but first I got to cut these shims. What I like to use is an oscillating tool. I'll put a link in the description below to these oscillating heads so that way you can pick them up if you need them and now I'm just going to go ahead and cut off these shims. I'm now going to use wallboard adhesive. You can use liquid nails or anything like that. Just something that's going to act as a glue. And I'm just going to run glue around these protruding parts of the back of the cabinets here. So now I'm just going to run a nice healthy bead right on this break. The main reason why I like to use the adhesive is because I don't have to use as many nails and then I don't want to patch as many holes later. Now we're going to take the piece of backing board and we're just going to place it right where it's going to cover up the back of this cabinet to give it a nice finished look. And then I'm going to take a trim nailer, the same trim gun that I used to install trim, and I'm just going to shoot nails right around the edge. You do not have to use a trim nailer like I'm using here. You can use a simple hammer and trim nails, but I like the trim nailer because it leaves less of a mark on the actual panel. In order to make the apron that's going to support the countertop's overhang, I got to attach L brackets to the sides here. The L brackets that I got are about two inch by two inch and they accept three screws on each side. And the screws I'm gonna be using are these little half inch screws. You clearly don't want them going through this wood. So I'm gonna attach them going to the sides like this. Now, when you put this bracket on, you don't wanna put it flush on the edge of the wood. You want it to send it back just a little bit, about an eighth inch. So that way when you put screws in the side, it draws it into the cabinet. So we're going to attach an L bracket on each side of these pieces of wood. And when you install these brackets, make sure they are sitting square. So about like that, and like I said, offset back from the edge just a little bit. And go ahead and anchor them into place. We're now going to attach these side pieces of the apron. And in order to do so, we're just going to hold it flush on the outside of this cabinet. And we're just gonna use those same screws that we used earlier to attach them to the apron. And now we're gonna roughly shim up the post 
in order to get it semi-level to start out with. Now we're just going to attach it to this post just like we did the other side. And that's all there is to attaching this side and then we do the same from post to post with the longer piece. This is one of those situations where having a helper is definitely invaluable and also I'll put a middle support just to keep it from bowing out. I'm now going to build the encasement that's going to go around the refrigerator. So as you can see back here I got a panel leg then I got another one just like it and then I got a cabinet that's going above the refrigerator but this cabinet is only 24 inches deep and that panel is only 32 inches long. Well, not only, but it's 32 inches deep. So there's a difference of about eight inches. To make up that eight inch difference, I built these pieces out of wood and how these are gonna work is I'm gonna take screws and attach them to the cabinet like so. So it's gonna act as a spacer for my eight inch spacing and also is gonna allow me to screw this to the wall behind the cabinet. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach these and then we're gonna attach this to the panel legs. I have tried in the past building this upright instead of on the ground and standing it up first, but I will say it's much easier to do this on the ground and then stand it up after the fact. So we went ahead and set this into place and got it level where it sets and we anchored the bottom to the base cabinets. Now we need to go ahead and plumb this setup up. So what I'm gonna do is drive a screw into those blocks that we made to attach to this cabinet here. And then after we get it plumb, I'm just gonna put a screw to hold it right into a stud or the blocking in the back. Now we know this panel's setting perfectly plumb. And now what we gotta do is get this width here, which is 36 inches and go to the floor to make sure we're 36 inches apart as well and then plumb up this panel. In order to address this panel, what I did was put a cleat here on the wall. I plumbed it up and that way it's gonna secure this panel to this cleat. And if you don't have a stud behind it like I did here or blocking, what you can do is put drywall anchors back into the drywall first, then anchor your board to it if you gotta do it that way. And I'm gonna take some adhesive and just run it along this cleat first. I'm now just gonna take my trim nailer and I'm gonna push this panel back against that cleat and then just tack little nails in the side of this panel and then I'm gonna caulk over them and paint it later. Now it's time to start the wall cabinets. And in order to start the wall cabinets, you must start in the corner of the kitchen. But we also need to make sure the height of our wall cabinets is accurate. So in order to do that, the best way to do it is after you install a tall pantry or a tall cabinet, whatever you want to call this tallest end cabinet here on these base cabinets, you're going to have to measure down. So for instance, these wall cabinets are 42 inches. So I'm going to have to measure down off this tall cabinet, 42 inches. I'm going to make a mark on the wall. And then what I got to do is measure up off the base cabinet, and that's gonna give me the height in which I gotta come off the base cabinet to install these cabinets. So I got 19 and a half inches off the base before I start the wall cabinets. So that measurement's really critical in order to keep the same elevation of wall cabinets going around the kitchen. After I got that height measurement, I built a box out of two by tens that's 19 and a quarter inches tall and about 36 inches wide. So that way I can use it to support the wall cabinet right off the base cabinets. This is like a secret weapon to wall cabinet installation. Now that I got the height in which the wall cabinets have to start, I'm now gonna come over here to the back corner where we put those cleats on in the beginning of the video and measure up 19 and a half inches because that's going to be where our wall cabinet height is going to start. So now we know this mark in the corner, we got to place a level line going across from that mark. I'm now just going to take a two foot level and then level line right off that 19 and a half inch mark. And then on this wall as well. So now we know we need to set our corner cabinet to that height. All right, now the cabinet is setting up here that needs installed in this corner, and they are usually shipped with the cabinet shelves inside of the cabinet, so we're first gonna remove those. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the door off of the cabinet. Take a three and a half by three and a half block with a hole that's drilled in the center of it, and I'm gonna use this as a spacer to pre-drill the back of the cabinet because I put blocking inside of these walls when I frame the house. If you've been following me on this house building project, you would have seen me do it, but there is blocking right behind the drywall. 
and it's going to line up with the cabinet in order for this to work. So we're just going to lay this right in the bottom of the cabinet and drill them out. This is an eighth inch drill bit that I'm using to pre-drill for the screws and also it helps to have multiple drills on hand. I have a drill with an eighth inch drill bit then another drill with the countersink attached. Just so you're aware, whenever you make your block to pre-drill your cabinets, make sure it's the right size to come through the wood strip at either the top or the bottom of the cabinet because that's where your strength is in order to secure the cabinet to the wall. Now the cabinet's prepped to be ready to be installed, so I'm gonna move it out of the way for just a moment. Now I'm bringing over that box that I made earlier to install the cabinets, and this thing is a lifesaver for installing wall cabinets. You'll see here in just a second why it's so useful. So now what I'm gonna do is place my corner cabinet right on top of this box. And I'm just gonna shift the cabinet back into place. So the box is supporting the weight of the cabinet. Now what I'm gonna do is take some shims and shim up each side to line up with the level lines that we made off the 18 and a half inch mark. Because I need to use shims to fine tune the height of the cabinet, that is why I made the height of the box a quarter inch less than what the actual height was needed. Now I got the cabinet lined up with the level lines underneath. So using the assistance of this box, it's way easier to install these cabinets because now all I got to do is screw it right to the wall. The fasteners that I'm going to use to install this cabinet is a two and a half inch decking screw with a number 12 washer and it's going to slide right over it like this. And this exact washer is actually called a beauty ring. So as you can see, it's going to give it a nice finish when it's inside the cabinet so it just looks a little better and it's going to hold well. Now I'm just going to place these screws into those holes we just pre-drilled and then tighten it into that blocking. This corner wall cabinet required a total of eight screws to secure it into place. After the screws are drove into the cabinet and secured to the wall, we're going to remove these shims and now the cabinet is installed at the height we need and we're going to remove this and all we're going to do is slide over and now we're going to install the next cabinet using the assistance of this box and it's easy from here we just kind of repeat that process and hook these faces together as we go. It is helpful if you remove all of the doors off the cabinets before you begin installation. I'd like to show you how I address the cabinet that's going to support the microwave and if you take a look here I stubbed a wire out and this is a direct home run to the panel box that's by code has to be that way for a microwave in my area. So I noticed a lot of microwaves the cord comes out on the right side here so what I'm going to do is drill out the back of the cabinet that goes here and going to put the wire coming through it, something like that. So I'm going to get a measurement over and I usually do about seven inches or so off the center. So if we take a look here, that looks like it'll work out well. So I'm going to drill out the cabinet in order to get this wire to come through and I'll show you what I do to address the outlet. This is the cabinet that's going to go above the microwave and this is a single gang electrical box and as you can see it's metal and it's going to mount somewhere in here and in order to compensate for this Romex connector that I got to install in the back of this metal box it has to be a fairly large hole but not super big but I'll show you what I use. I have an inch and a quarter drill bit here so whenever I drill this out it's going to allow for that Romex connector. So as I said before, I want to find the center here of this inside of the cabinet. Now that I found the center, I'm just going to come over about seven inches. And now I'm going to set this box up here to see about where it's going to hit. And I need to make sure it's enough for the outlet cover to clear here. So I'm just going to set it somewhere right in there. And it does have to be exact because like I said, I'm just going to pull the wire through and there is no box right behind the wall. It's going to come straight out into this box. So I'm going to go ahead and just drill that out right there. Now I'm going to go put this in and pull the wire through. I did cut the drywall out to where the wire can sit back into the drywall because the Remax connector would pinch it if I didn't do that. As far as how to wire the actual receptacle, first I stripped the wires and then I put hooks on the ends of the wires and then in this case I'm going to use a bonding screw and bond the ground wire to this metal box and then I'm going to tighten down that screw very tight and now I'm going to take the receptacle and hook the ground screw terminal up to that wire and then hook the white neutral up to the silver screw and then I'm going to take the black to hook to the gold screws and tighten those up as well. Push it back into the box nice and neat. Typically wiring an outlet is a simple DIY project, but if you do not feel comfortable doing electrical, definitely don't do the electrical and hire a professional to do this part of the cabinet installation. All right, we're going to install this cabinet next and we're just going to slide it right up 
to the other wall cabinet we already have installed. Now, as you can see, we just shim this up to meet this other cabinet that's already set. So as simple as sliding your shims right under there like so, nothing to it. And then, as you can see, we got a gap up here, so we got to shim this side of the cabinet to make it tight like that. So simple as that. And now we're just going to clamp this side together just like we did the other cabinets. I noticed this face will not go flush with this face and that's because I'm gonna to have to loosen up these screws in the back because there's just a little bit of difference there. So sometimes you have to do that. The truth is installing cabinets is not that complicated. After you do your first cabinet installation job, your second one will be a breeze. Now we just connect the faces just like we did on the base cabinets. I apologize for the brightness going in and out of this footage. It's because of the window, but I needed to record this part so you can see how to connect the cabinets. Now I'm gonna remove these clamps and we're gonna check the level up top and then adjust the shims accordingly. But actually, that looks really good where it's at. Now we're just going to drill out the back of the cabinets and install the screws. This cabinet is gonna require four screws, two in the bottom in each corner and two in the top in each corner. I'm now going to install this toe kick along the bottom of these base cabinets. And in order to start that, I gotta take my oscillating tool and cut all the shims along the base cabinets first. As you can see, I cut out a spot here that's for the vent that's underneath of this cabinet next to the kitchen sink. And all you gotta do with the toe kick, it's very easy to install. You just cut it to length, and clearly if there's a dishwasher right here, you don't cover that up. So this is cut to length from that corner to into this cabinet run. And all you gotta do is slide it right underneath the cabinet and press it up tight against the bottom of the cabinet like so. And then you wanna try to nail about every 16 inches or so, just put two nails. You don't have to nail the heck out of this stuff. It's very lightweight. Make sure everything lines up, looks good. I'm gonna start the end and just put two nails every 16 inches. And you wanna make sure that you're tight on the floor. And if there's any kind of bow, just try to press it out just like as if you're installing base trim around a room. Before I install the doors back on the wall cabinets, I'm going to first install the crown molding around the top of the cabinets. And I like to keep the doors off so that way I don't damage them with my tool bag as I'm up there working around. And if you need to know how to do that, check out this video. It'll help you out. <laughs> 